In this video, we're going to look at the sequence a sub k, and we're going to write out the first five terms and the first four partial sums. And this sequence is a special type of sequence, and that name will become apparent here as we work through this. So it um, doesn't really tell us here where to start, so we're just going to assume we're starting at k equals 1, unless otherwise specified. Okay, so k sub 1 is going to be negative 1 to the second power over 1. Uh, a sub 2 is going to be negative 1 to the 2 plus 1 or third power over 2. A sub 3 is going to be negative 1 to the 3 plus 1 or fourth power over 3. A sub 4 negative 1 to the fifth power over 4 and a sub 5 is going to be negative 1 to the sixth power over 5. All right, let's see what we've got here. So we've got 1 and let's see, it looks like this is going to be negative 1 over 2. And then we have positive 1 over 3 and negative 1 over 4 and then positive 1 over 5. And we could see how this would continue. So there's a special part of this sequence, this guy right here, that causes the terms of this sequence to alternate between positive and negative, positive and negative. So this is what we call an alternating sequence. Now, when we want to think about the series, associated with this sequence. Let's say we want to find or look at, if it exists, the infinite sum from k equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k plus 1 over k. So that's going to be 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth, etc. And this is what we call an alternating series. Alternating indicating that the terms of the series alternate between positive and negative, plus minus. Now we, we maybe could have started with a, with a negative and then a positive. That would still be alternating. And we could do that by just making this negative 1 to the k instead of negative 1 to the k plus 1. All that would do is switch the signs of the terms. So in an alternating sequence or an alternating series, if you're adding them up, you're going to see one of these two things usually, negative 1 to the k or negative 1 to the k plus 1. There's really no reason to write negative 1 to the k plus 2 because that's just going to give you the same result as negative 1 to the k. So the question we're going to end up asking ourselves is, does this series converge or diverge? And you can look at it, it kind of looks like um, the harmonic series that we've looked at before, that you've probably looked at before, which is just the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k. So it's missing this piece right here that makes it alternating. And at some point, hopefully you have had the opportunity to prove that this guy is divergent. All right, but here we have the same series except with this negative 1 to the k plus 1 factor involved, which creates an alternating series. So there's going to be a special test called the alternating series test that we could use on any alternating series. So this is just as one example of an alternating series, okay? As long as I have this particular one of these two factors in here with some other um, terms, then I'm going to get an alternating series. So for example, I could think of a sub k as this negative 1 to the k plus 1 times some other b sub k. And in this case, the b sub k is 1 over k. And But this b sub k could be any other um, sequence that doesn't contain this factor here. We wouldn't want to wipe this factor out in any way. Um, and, and that would create an alternating sequence. 
So when we look at the series now, we want to try to determine whether this converges or diverges. So just to give us a little intuition about what might be happening, let's write out the first few terms. We're going to write out the first four partial sums. All right, so let's go over here. What were our terms again? Let's see, we had um, 1, negative half, positive third, negative fourth, positive fifth. So S sub 1 is the sum of the first term. That's just 1. S sub 2 is 1 plus negative half, or 1 minus a half. So that is a half. S sub 3, the sum of the first three terms. I'll just write it with a minus here. That's going to be a half plus a third. Let's see, a half plus a third. That would be uh, 3, 6 plus 2, 6. That would be 5, 6. Sum of the first four terms is basically going to be right all these terms, which is 5, 6, plus the fourth term, which is a negative 1 fourth. Let's see, if we put this in 20 fourths times uh, 4 and, oops, that's not right. Let's try that again. How about 20? Is that better? 5 times 4 is 20, and then times that by 6. So it looks like we get uh, 14 24 which is going to reduce down to 7 twelfths. All right, and so then we would keep going. Then we would uh, add a fifth to that. And then we would subtract a sixth, and then we'd add a, a seventh. All right, I'm going to show you a graph here in a second. So let's just look at the decimal approximations of these. Lost my mouse there. Here we go. Okay, so my sum, my first uh, partial sum is 1. My next partial sum is 1 half, which is 0.5. I'm writing this now as a sequence of partial sums. Okay, there's my second partial sum. My third partial sum is 5, 6, which is about 0 0.8333. 3, 3. It's 8, 3 bar, all right? And my next partial sum, S sub 4, is 7 twelfths, which is 0 0.583 bar. The reason I just want to look at these decimals, even though these aren't very nice, is because we're going to look at a graph, okay? So maybe jot these down. We got 0 0.5, 1, 0 0.5, about 0 0.8, and 0 0.6. So let's go look at this graph here. Here we have our sum of our first n terms of this sequence we're looking at. So right here, this 1 is representing s sub 1, this 1 right here. Actually, let me write that a different way. This 1 is your n value, excuse me, your k value. Actually, just in this first case, it's, it's your k value because we're only adding the first term. Um, and then this would be the first two terms, so that's your n value, and the first three terms. So the output up here, this output here is giving you the point 1 s sub 1. So it's n is 1, and we're adding the first one term. Okay, this point right here is the point 2 s sub 2. So this is the sum of the first two terms. Remember what that was? That was a half, right? That was 0. 0.5. Okay, the next one was supposed to be uh, 5, 6, which was about 0. 0.8. So 3, S sub 3 is right here. That's about 0. 0.83. Here's the point 4, S sub 4. So this is the sum of the first four terms, which is our 7 twelfths. Our decimal was a little less than 0. 0.6. And if we kept going, you could see this This is what would happen, all right? The sum of the first five terms, six terms, seven terms, eight terms, nine terms. What I want you to really notice here is the pattern with the alternating series because we have a positive term and negative term, a positive term and negative term. Here we're starting off with our first terms positive of one, and then because the next term is negative, we're going to get smaller. Okay, now the next term's positive, so we're going to get a bigger sum. Then the next term's negative, so our sum's going to get smaller. Then the next term's positive, so it's going to get bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, and we see what's happening here. So certainly it looks like this guy is converging to some value here, right? Whatever this value is here, that would be our infinite sum. Now there's a couple rules that have to be 
uh, met, a couple criteria that have to be met in order for us to know whether an alternating series is converging, and we'll talk about those in the next video.